1392. Koryo has fallen. Its last three kings put to death by General Isongye, who will later become known as Tejo of Joseon. Isongye had gained respect by pushing Mongol force remnants off the Korean peninsula and successfully repelled some Japanese pirates' attacks. He was also a key figure in the repelling of the Red Turban's rebels from China who attempted to invade Goryeo. Yi Songye founded a new kingdom in July of 1392, the Joseon dynasty. Little did he know at the time that his newly founded kingdom would live on for more than 500 years. It is the last dynastic kingdom of Korea. Joseon is also known as the Yi dynasty following the clan name of the ruling house. After the collapse of the Yuan and the founding of the Ming dynasty in China, the decision to attack the Liaodong Peninsula in China was taken in response to raids from Chinese bandits. Also, since Goryeo claimed to be the successor to the ancient kingdom of Goguryeo, retaking Manchuria was very important to its foreign policy. In 1388, General Yi Songye was ordered to push the Ming forces out of the Liaodong Peninsula. He refused. It is said that he gave out these four reasons for his decision. 1. A smaller nation should not attack a larger nation. It goes against the Confucian order of the world. 2. It is difficult to campaign during summer farming season. It will result in a poor harvest for the people. 3. With my armies to the north, the south will be unprotected against Japanese pirates. 4. Monsoon rains will reduce the efficacy of composite bows as well as help spreading infectious diseases amongst the troops. While on Weihua Island, located on the Yalu River that borders Korea and China, he planned a coup d'etat. He then came back to the capital of Goryeo, Kegyong, but first he had to defeat Che Yong, a national hero and main rival of his. Che Yong was a Goryeo general who first gained prestige by winning multiple conflicts with Japanese pirates. In 1352, he successfully put down a rebellion led by Zhou Ilshin. This victory made him a national hero in Goryeo. At that time, Goryeo was a tributary of the Yuan dynasty and was asked to send troops to fight against the Red Turban rebels. Chaeyong was deployed to northern China and won many battles. The Yuan dynasty was in decline and King Gongmin thought it was time to reclaim some territory that was lost to the Mongols. Chaeyong was sent there and regained many towns. In 1356, he attacked Sang Song and quickly received the surrender of the Mongol Korean governor. Tejo's father, Yi Jia Chun, was living there at the time. He was a Mongol official of Korean descent. In 1360, the Red Turbans invaded Goryeo, but were defeated by Che Yong. He was briefly the mayor of Pyongyang and successfully took care of a famine there. Empress Gi of Yuan sent 10,000 soldiers to Goryeo. I have thoroughly explored her life in a previous video, but to quickly recap, she was a Goryeo native who became the empress of the second to last Yuan emperor, Togon Timur. She decided to attack Goryeo because King Gongmin massacred her family, who were still in Goryeo. Che Yong and his armies defeated the invading Mongol armies without too much trouble. General Che was then asked to eliminate the Mongol forces remaining on Jeju Island. While there, he stopped the Japanese pirates' advance to the south. Yi song was a subordinate of Che Yong, but Yi song had a lot of support and allies in the Goryeo court and, due to that, he could more easily defeat Cheyong. 
Chen Yong was banished to Goyang and later beheaded. Before his death, Chae Yong was famously known to have predicted that grass would never grow on his grave because of his unjust demise. It is said that grass started to grow on his tomb since only 1976. Following this, Yi song -ye killed King Wu. Yi bang -won, his son, killed Zhang Mongju, a most loyal and respected official of Goryeo. I have previously discussed the life of Zhang Mongju in a previous video. I invite you to watch this after this one. Yi song -ye exiled King Gongyang to Wonju, a puppet king that he put in place. King Gongyang was killed, along with his family. Yi song -ye then ascended the throne as Yi Dan and founded the Joseon dynasty. It was named after Go Joseon, a legendary kingdom that was established nearly 3,000 years ago before Shila, Pekche, and Goguryeo. Yi song -ye's posthumous name is Tejo, and I'll refer to him as such from now on. As soon as he was on the throne, Tejo made sure to improve relations with Ming China. This was helped greatly by the fact that Tejo himself refused to attack Ming just a few years ago. Tejo also sent envoys to Japan. It is said that Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, the shogun at the time, was impressed by this initial embassy. In 1395, envoys from the kingdom of Ayutthaya now in present-day Thailand, were received and well-treated, but seemingly didn't lead to more exchanges. In 1394, Tejo moved the capital to Hanyang from Kegyong, modern-day Kaesong. Kegyong was thought to have lost the energy required to be maintained as a capital following the Feng Shui or Pung Su Jiri, philosophy of geomancy. Hanyang, also known as Hansong, is known today as Seoul. Seoul was called Namgyong during Goryeo, meaning southern capital. It is said that Hanyang was flowing with geomantic energy. It had large mountains to the north and smaller mountains to the south and a large plain at its center. This would fit the customary north-south axis found in geomancy. That same year, Tejo had to decide who was going to be his successor. This would be something that would plague the new ruler for many years to come. Ibang Wan, Tejo's fifth son, was clearly the most worthy successor since he contributed the most to his father's rise to power from the planning of the coup to carrying it out. It is also said that he removed his father's opposition by force sometimes going against his father's wishes. Zhang Dojun, the prime minister and most trusted ally of Tejo, didn't vouch for Yi Bang Wan. Zhang Dojun, also known as Sambong, was the principal architect of the Joseon dynasty's policies. He was at the foundation of Joseon's ideological, institutional and legal frameworks. As soon as the kingdom was founded in 1392, he was put in charge of military affairs, diplomacy, education, political systems, and taxes. He made Confucianism the national religion, thus suppressing Buddhism. Joseon was to become a highly centralized bureaucracy following Zhang Dojun's initial reforms. He also conceived and named Gyeongbokgung the main royal palace of the Joseon dynasty. Gyeongbokgung was built facing south following Chinese tradition and it resembled the imperial palace in Beijing. Tejo ordered the construction of a fortified wall to surround Hanyang. The walls were 18.6 kilometers long, had four large gates at each cardinal directions and five smaller gates. Zhang Dojun convinced Tejo to choose his eighth son, Yi Bang Sok, as crown prince. Zhang Dojun wished that Joseon would become a kingdom led by intellectuals and ministers, thus relegating the king to a symbolic figure. Yi Bang Wan wanted the exact opposite, 
absolute monarchy, direct rule by the king. Yi Bangwan's mother was Queen Xin Ui, who died in 1391. Yi Bang Sok's mother was Queen Xin Dok. She died in 1396. In 1398, Yi Bangwan raided the palace, killed Zhong Dojan and his supporters, killed Queen Xin Dok's two sons, his half brothers, Yi Bang Sok, the crown prince, and Yi Bang Bon. This event was known as the First Strife of Princes. Tejo was still mourning the death of his queen, Shindok. He was psychologically exhausted, and now his son, Ibang Wan, was killing his brothers for the crown. Tejo couldn't believe it. He abdicated and crowned his second son, Ibang Wa, King Zhongzhong, as the new ruler. His first son, Ibang Wu, died in 1394, possibly from alcoholism. Tejo then retired to Hamhong Royal Villa, which is now located in North Korea. Kim Jong-jung reverted the capital to Kaesong, thinking he'd be more comfortable there, away from his brother Yi Bang-wan and his lust for power. But in reality, Yi Bang-wan retained real power in the empire. No royal orders went through without Yi Bang-wan's blessings. His older brother, Yi Bang-gan, also yearned for power. In the year 1400, the second strife of princes started. The tension between Yi Bang-wan and Yi Bang-gan escalated into an all-out conflict in which Yi Bang-gan was defeated. He was exiled to Dosan, and his supporters were killed. Following this, Zhong Zhong appointed his brother Yi Bang-wan crown prince and abdicated soon after. Yi Bang-wan finally became the third king of Joseon, King Taejong. At the beginning of Taejong's reign, Tejo refused to relinquish the royal seal that signified the legitimacy of any king's rule. Tejo also refused to meet his son and the emissaries sent by Yi Bang-wan. These emissaries never returned home, so the term Ham Hung Chasa was coined during that time. It was subsequently used to refer to a person who went somewhere to do something but never sent any news and was never heard from again. It is said that the emissaries were killed by Tejo, but in fact, they might have been killed during revolts in that region. In any case, Tejo finally came back to the capital, Hanyang, when his son started to institute policies that were good for the people. It is said that when Tejo returned to the capital, Tejong fell to his knees and wept at his father's feet. Tejo died on May 24, 1408, in Changdok Palace in Hanyang. He was buried in Guri. His tomb is known as Gonwolung. Tejo had six sons and two daughters from his first wife, Queen Xin Ui. He had two sons and one daughter with his second wife, Queen Xin Dok. Tejo is seen by most as a revolutionary that got rid of an obsolete governing system and saved the nation from foreign powers. For some though, he was a traitor to Goryeo and just wanted to serve his own interests as opposed to, for example, Cheyong who was a military elite who served Goryeo until his death. There are many legends about his extraordinary skills in archery and horseback riding. He was also known as an outstanding falconer. Although he was king for only six years, Tejo must be credited for his leadership and military ability. He established a tradition of reverence to China, sending gifts to the Chinese emperor three times per year. He also made clear and codified that Joseon would be based on Confucian law and ideals. His posthumous name, Tejo, means great progenitor. There would be a total of 26 rulers of Joseon. I will discuss all of them, so stay tuned for further videos on the history of Korea. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment.